I'm Adam, the founder of Carno. A few months ago, we unveiled Sepia to the world, and we're really proud to be able to give you more details, including that of the first host, the L6, and some of the modules coming later this year from our platform partners. We're going to take you on a tour of the tech, the software, a roadmap, and pricing. But first, CPU was created in consultation with more than 150 engineers from the top end of our industry. And we really would love for you to be able to learn from their perspective just why CPU is so exciting. Hi, my name is Paul Gatehouse. I'm a sound designer working in theatre, West End and Broadway, and also a mixer in audio post production. I've been consulting with Carno on Sepia, and I'm really excited to share with you how I'm going to integrate it into my workflow. So, Sepia is going to allow me to replace some of my digital stage racks with analog preamps, opening up a new palette of color and texture. It's going to bring in some classic designs that we've seen before and just give us some new new options, new weight, new colors to our sound. Whereas we've previously used plugins in our live work, we can now bring in those analog circuits to give us warmth and weight. And we can integrate all this easily into our digital infrastructure. Having the myriad of IO options for CPU enables us to integrate it at different parts of the signal chain. So we can put it at the front end for our preamps with analog in and digital MADI out. And then at the console end, we can integrate it seamlessly into our Dante or MADI workflow and create internal routings within the CPU mainframe to create our chains. I'm really looking forward to bringing these original designs into my workflow, something I've wanted to do for a while. I use them in the studio a lot. It's great to be able to use them in the live world in this great format. I've been lucky enough to hear some of the CPU modules and I'm really excited to integrate them into my projects. You've heard how I'll be using CPU. Now it's time to hear from some others. <laughs> hey, my name's Tom Wiggins. Bob Strickler here. I'm Rob Sadler. Jay Jones. I'm Richard Brooker. Miles. Who's Alex Lammy? Liam Halpin. Tom Marshall. Hi, my name's Ben Hammond. I'm Joe Hattams. Is Ian Barfoot? Stuart Dow. It's Andy Johnson. I'm Brendan Williams. Uh, Lee Richardson. This is Ross Miller. My name's Adam Fisher. My name is Gerard. I'm Tom Ford. Hey, Chad Olick here. Currently front of house engineer for Fallout Boy. I'm McDonald. I'm Block Party. And Tool. I'm Tool. Ronnie Scott's Jazz Club. Rag and Bone Man. I'm an award winning production music composer. I'm a sound designer. A theatre sound designer. A sound designer and sound engineer. A composer. A library music composer. Sound designer. Front of house engineer for Skunk and Nancy. Katie Minogue. For the Kooks. Loading in a Ben Sevenfold. Theatre sound designer working on shows such as Sunset Boulevard. I think Sepia is a brilliant concept. Never been anything quite like it before. Before. I'm a big fan of the Sepia platform. I use my favourite EQ, use favourite compression, but in a digital domain. And I'm very excited about Sepia. One of the most incredible uh, new technology out there. The ability to have classic and modern uh, analog outboard in a small footprint. Stick my favorite modules in my backpack and travel around the world with them. CPU, I think, could be a real game changer. What CPU can potentially bring to my workflow. Analog audio components, both in the studio and out on location. It's going to have all sorts of cool uh, toys to play with. And I'm really excited about CPU. I'm a big fan of the Econo CPU. CPU seems like the next evolution. Being able to use my favorite analog hardware to have the option of loads of good quality modules. Just send a quick note about my excitement for the new Carno CPU system. I've had a chance to get my hands on it at NAM this year, and it uh, looks really promising. Excited about all the module options and the portability of it. So uh, keep your eye out. Peace. So now we'll take a look at our first host, the L6. The L6 is a 1U six module host with an external I.O. of 8 in and 8 out. The L6 has a dipped rear, which allows us to stack as many L6s on top of each other without the need for gaps. Each module inside the L6, as with any future host, is secured by a two button latching system. To release this, you have to press both buttons at the same time. To reinsert the module, you just put pressure on the front plate. This can be done by the unit on or off. Right, let's get into the detail. So there's a lot to cover, and we're gonna begin with the signal flow. So we're just gonna flip this thing around. We'll begin with the six mic and line XLR inputs, and then we also have two additional TRS line inputs that are assignable via the cross point. After that, we have an option card. This can either be analog out, or it can be digital IO. And we are launching with Dante, MADI, and AES. Moving on to the control section, we have both Ethernet and USB. 
The USB can also be used to create your own Bluetooth network by using a Bluetooth dongle, or it could be used to save files onto a USB storage device. The power section over here is for the primary AC input, which I'll go into how the power works a little bit later, but also has the backup DC mains, giving you a redundant power supply. Within all this I.O., there is additionally a passive audio bypass, meaning that if the unit loses power, your audio passes directly from input to output, maintaining the L6 as a show critical device without any audio drops. So now I've got audio into the L6, what happens next? Well, it travels straight from the rear of the unit into the module, and for that, we need to flip it back around. Let's get the lid off. So from here, we can now see the rest of the signal flow. So as I said, it travels from the rear of the unit into the module. Now, once it goes to the module, this could be a transformer balance part, or it could be any part that the manufacturer chooses for its signal flow. It then travels through the first stage of the module. From then, it goes into what we call the CPM mainframe. These are a bunch of generic analog stages. They're completely atonal, but they provide a supporting infrastructure that modules can use to reduce the amount of things that have to go inside the module. After it's gone through the mainframe, it can then enter into the cross point, which is under here. The cross point can route that signal from there to absolutely anywhere else. And with sepia patch, which we will explain more later, it can go to any other sepia frame as well. After it's entered this stage, it then re-enters that module, if you do not route it elsewhere, and then goes into a second module stage. On the second module stage, again, it can go through whatever electronics are inside that module before entering the mainframe for the second time. This is what we call the sepia bridging signal flow and is part of our unique design. Once it has gone through the mainframe for the second time, it then enters into the output section of the unit. This is where, whether it's digital or analog, it will then go through assignable outputs and then exit the L6 into whatever device you choose. Now let's talk about power. So as I mentioned before, we have a redundant power supply system, meaning if the primary system fails, there is a DC backup option. From here, we enter into our advanced power supply design. Here we have a number of pre-regulators, which mean that we can maximize efficiency, thermal performance, all while feeding seven internal power supplies within the L6 host. The next power supply section here is our linear regulators for each module. This means modules can request the exact power they need from plus or minus three volts to plus or minus 30 volts, from power to thermals. We took the thermal design extremely seriously when designing sepia, especially as it allowed us to lower the footprint of the modules themselves. It all starts here, two thermal bias springs on the module alignment that lift the module to the lid once the module is inserted. Here, heat is transferred onto a high conductive aluminium alloy and then travels back into this channel here. This channel is populated by heat sinks, an air gap and temperature sensing fans that maintain an almost silent operation. So now we've gone through the L6 and if you need any more information, you can find it at carno.com. But the most important bit about sepia is its modules. We have a single module and a dual module. Each module slot of a CPU system is two I.O., so this can also be stereo, and this can be four inputs and four outputs. Inside the modules are authentic analog components brought to you by their original manufacturers. They're able to achieve such a small footprint by utilizing all the aspects in CPU's design. But why don't you hear from them yourself? Well, hi. This is Sam from SPL. It's Talat Mora. I'm the Director of Engineering here at API. Mike from Pope Audio. I'm Adam from Pope Audio. Hey guys, it's Eric from Locomotive Audio. Hi everyone, it's Mark here from XTA Electronics and MC Squared Audio. Hey guys, HLabs is joining the CPI platform this fall and it's gonna be awesome. We just wanted to say that we're thrilled to be working with Carno on their new uh, groundbreaking CPI platform. This is the first time that we look at a major platform that can incorporate all the cool analog tools that Digitally controlled. Now that's a game changer. So when we learned about Sepia, we were very excited to bring some of the API products into the live and theatrical world. It will be easier than ever to use our studio-inspired designs on stage with the exact same sound and made in France quality as our actual products Pre-169 and EQ-169. We make the Bats 2020, the Dirty C Analog Chorus, and they're in the first catalog of products out there. Can't wait to see them in the hands of the professionals. Be on the lookout for my tube compressor very soon. I think CPI is the future of modular audio, and we are really happy to help on shaping this future now. Stay tuned, because this is just the beginning.
Hi there, I'm Sarah, General Manager at Carno, and I'm here to talk you through the software side of the Sepia platform, of which there are three main areas. Firstly, the dashboard. This area gives you visibility on your entire network, whether that be one or a fleet of hosts. Secondly, the module control panels. These control panels encapsulate the experience of the original hardware controls with all the added bonuses of digital control. These can be viewed in several ways, either by clicking on the module or by dragging them to a focus panel, which can also be used in various different configurations, including a separate window. Next, we have Creator. Creator is Sepia's solution to harnessing all the platform's hardware routing capabilities. Here we have employed a stacking workflow, dragging and dropping modules into signal chains with the I.O. configurable at the beginning and end of the chain. This helps to visualize the signal path and serves as a simple, elegant solution to a modular hardware system with endless routing possibilities. Within Creator, we can have the ability to split modules at insert points within the circuitry itself routing separate halves of modules within different chains. We can also create side chains using buses, utilize additional I.O. any hosts have to offer, control phantom power, meter, stereo merge, save and recall the system at incremental levels. Being digitally controlled really allows us to bring the Sepia hardware into your workflow. Creator can be expanded further to create vast ecosystems utilizing Sepia Patch. Finally, all of these features are available offline to build your system and save your files before you use it. At its core, Sepia is controlled by what we call the Acoria engine, allowing almost any protocol in the industry to control Sepia. This novel engine allows module UIs, their dials, metering, faders, branding and more to be rendered elegantly and efficiently on all major control surfaces, from a laptop, phone, tablet, or DAW, all the way to consoles. The Acoria engine is responsible for taking the control of Sepia from a piece of software to a powerful tool supporting the far reach and continuing expansion of the Sepia platform across all workflows. That's a first look at the software. We will be sharing more in-depth information soon, so please head to carno.com to find out more. Hi, I'm Sam, Sales Manager here at Carno. So you've seen the start of Sepia and heard from some of the engineers who've helped develop the platform. We're now going to go through the how, when and where to get your hands on Sepia. Sepia will be brought to you by Carno, our network and the network of our platform partners initially launching in the UK, the USA, across Europe, and as far down as Australia, with the rest of the world following shortly after. Pricing on our first host, the L6, will start at 1,990 US dollars. So when can you see Sepia out in the wild? We begin taking pre-orders on April 2nd and start our global rental partner tour two days later on April 4th. We will then be demonstrating with some of the world's biggest artists from April 22nd, and most importantly, Stock will be available from dealers and on the shelf of our global rental partner network from August 2024. Thank you so much for your time. For more information, please go to carno.com and don't be afraid to get in touch. But more importantly, we cannot wait for you to experience CP yourself.